Mike Moore Media, the first place to hear Rockingham County news and information. Hey, everybody. This is Jennifer Barton, uh, Executive Director of the Eden Chamber of Commerce, here today with my March Member of the Month, uh, Paula and Kevin Thompson from Black Sheep Boutique Quilt Company on Washington Street in Uptown Eden. Thank you guys so much for coming. I'm so, so super excited that we can be here and hang out and have a little conversation. Great. Thank you. So we'll just dive right in. For anybody who may not know who Black Sheep is, what you guys do, tell us about the shop and what makes it so special and unique. Sure. Uh, We opened it up in October of 2020, so it's only been a few months, but it's been really good times for us and hopefully for our customers. We're a full-service quilt and fabric shop, so we have high-end fabrics from companies like Moda and Free Spirit, Art Gallery, and and a lot of high-end designers uh, that you would see out there as well. We carry, you know, the Notions, the sewing supplies. We have Eversown sewing machines, uh, and we also uh, provide beginner and intermediate classes. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're the only quilt shop here in Eden. Uh, We hope we've become a destination spot for surrounding cities like Reedsville, Danville, Martinsville. But also we're seeing a lot of folks coming in as far as away as, you know, Winston-Salem and Roanoke. So we're we're getting people from further than we had originally expected. The great thing about us is that we're in a downtown location. Uh, We're part of the recent revitalization efforts for for, uh, Uptown Eden. We're proud of that. It's a, it's a 1940 building built originally as a jewelry store. So it's a kind of a unique environment, very tall, 13-foot mm-hmm. walls, so we can hang our sample quilts for people to see. It's got a lot of antique furniture for displays. Uh, it has still has the original jewelry vault in it. Yes. That's where we keep all of our uh, fat quarters and uh, some other uh, notions are in there so people can come visit that. Uh, so, uh, and also for the husbands and sons <laughs> who may be tagging along with their, uh, with their wife, their wife or, or someone who's, and they may not be a quilter. We also have, uh, we also have custom made knives. Uh, my brother and I, we have a, a knife company out of Kentucky. And so we've got some custom made knives. We're getting mm-hmm. a lot of traffic with those. Paula, originally when I told her, I said, Hey, let's, let's carry some knives. She said, there's no way you can carry knives in a quilt shop. <laughs> But uh, it's worked out well. And so we get a lot of husbands who come back and just so they're not dealing with the fabric. They can deal with uh, <laughs> deal with knives. Awesome. Awesome. So you guys are not originally from Eden. Mm-hmm. Um, how did you land here? Well, Paul and I are both originally from small towns in Kentucky. Uh, and over the years, I've had jobs in marketing that have taken me all over the place. So we've been... From Kentucky to Alabama and South Carolina, Uh, we were in Virginia and Florida, uh, Ohio, uh, and finally a job took me into Greensboro. Okay. That was in 2012. And so uh, we decided to downsize uh, about four years ago. So Mm -hmm. we sold the house and moved up here. We wanted to be in a, you know, in uh, an environment that's small town like we're used to with caring neighbors, slower pace of life, and Mm -hmm. Eden has checked off all those boxes for us. We found a beautiful little 1936 house. It's got amazing characters, huge oak trees, uh, and it's still within walking distance of the shop. Yes. Everything's perfect for us. Yeah. It's, I happen to know where you live and think it's a great neighborhood. Yeah. (laughs) Um, so as we all know, COVID hit last year, uh, impacted everybody's business. Um, how, how did it impact your business, especially being brand new, and why was in the middle of the pandemic the best time to open a new business? Well, it wasn't intentional, but the, <clears throat> it, all the pieces did fall together for us. COVID itself uh, forced everyone to be staying at home a lot more. Uh, and so this allowed for people to explore a lot more of the domestic hobbies. Mm-hmm. And so you're, if you kind of read out there, you'll see uh, the number one uh, – uh, Recreational activity was bicycles. So if you tried to buy a bike last year, you would be out of luck. The number two recreational item was sewing machines. And we'll tell you that we struggled to find sewing machines when we first opened. It took months when normally it takes days. But uh, so a lot of people were doing more domestic things. So uh, painting and cooking and sewing were some of those things that were happening out there. Uh, So it was a boost for both, you know, someone who was a new, brand new quilter and also 
we found the shop to be great for uh, you know experienced quilters mm-hmm. who were looking for a place because there's there's not a lot around here. So all the pieces came together for us last year. The finances, finding the right shop location. Uh, I had a job uh, that just recently changed to be completely remote even before COVID. So and the pin up demand for this type of shop was definitely in this area. And so all the pieces came together. The planets aligned. And regardless of COVID, we probably would have opened the shop last year anyway. Okay. But it worked out even better for us. Okay. So <clears throat> you mentioned earlier, and a lot of people ask me just because of my job and because, well, they've seen that I hang out with you guys from time to time learning how to quilt myself. We love having you. Um, so a lot of people ask about classes. Um when are they? How do people sign up for them? Kind of what are the costs? Mm-hmm. Roughly I know it varies, I'm sure, from sure. project to project. Well, the best thing to do is to uh is to, you know, come by the shop and, and we can kind of feel you out, get an idea as to what your you know, your experience level is, what you're looking for. Uh we have most of our classes are on Mondays mm-hmm. and some are in the evenings because that's when the shops are closed. Uh, and so, uh, we have beginner classes and we've done many beginner classes already. Mm-hmm. Uh, we originally thought we'd do about one a month. They're ending up being almost weekly. <laughs> so poor Paula has just, uh, been teaching her, her, uh, her guts out, but we are, uh, we're doing the classes on Monday for beginners. And then we also do intermediate classes. So not just okay. for quilts, but other items, there's a uh, handmade purses. Uh, we got to, we're working on a class now for tuffets, uh, which is kind of a little, you know. A little stool uh, that's a quilted stool. It's really neat. Oh, like we, Little Miss Muffet? Sat on her tuffet. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, and so <laughs> along came the spider. So we've uh, we've got that. And there's actually a sample of that, at the, you know, of all these things at the shop. Right. So you come down and see what you like. We hope you pick out the patterns and stuff. Prices run, you know, in the neighborhood from, you know, $50 for the class fees. And then uh, you'll provide your own machine. And we'll help you pick out uh, fabrics and, and okay. supplies and get you ready for that. So I'll tell you just to, you know, check out the website, uh, blacksheetboutiquequiltco.com. Uh, and there's a tab on there for classes. It shows okay. you the most recent uh, information. They're booked up right now. We're kind of booked up for the next few weeks at least. But the best advice is to stop by the shop and mm-hmm. just talk to me or Paula, and we'll give you more information. So going off on a different little tangent, um, you've been uh, been around to a lot of different places, done several different things in your, in your career. Mm-hmm. Um, what advice do you have for someone who's contemplating opening a small business of their own? Well, I would tell you uh, to find the niche that's best for you. Find an area of the of you know the, the industry that's not just unique, but one that the community uh, has a void for, mm-hmm. has a need for. There's an old saying: it's like when you're going to hit a baseball, it's like don't don't hit where the ball's at now, but hit where the ball will be when your bat is there. And so, okay. same thing here is like kind of think about where you where the business, where the you know the industries and things are going, especially with COVID right now. That's really caused a. Uh, a lot more people to be at home, as we just said. And so that's opened up a lot of opportunities. I was reading an article the other day about uh, new business opportunities due to COVID. Mm-hmm. And some of the big ones out there, there's gardening and home improvement, uh, pet products. I thought that was interesting with pet products. A lot of shelters have asked people to take in animals now that you know they're at home more, mm-hmm. and they are. So all these industries, uh, home beauty products, uh, home fitness, home health programs, all those have seen uh, an uptick. I mean, it's definitely, in many cases, more than double uh, from previous year because of COVID. So there's opportunities out there. There's mm-hmm. you know grocery delivery and virtual, anything that has a virtual aspect to it, uh, I would tell you to kind of look at it. The second thing I would tell you is to understand your audience, is kind of know what they need and how they shop and how they're searching and then how to listen to them as well as how to respond to them. Right. And that's been a big deal for us with social media. Uh, we've really put a lot of time and effort into our social media to make sure that we're listening to what people have to say, not just physically, but even online. But also we respond. We're, we respond 100% of any mm-hmm. responses, that uh, feedback that comes onto the website. And then lastly, I would tell you to uh, you make sure you're investing in branding and smart marketing practices. And I'm saying that as a marketing guy, you know, of 30 years, but, you know, you know make sure you have a good website. Don't just get your cousin's brother's you know, cousin <laughs> to build a website because he took a, a computer class. Spend a little bit of money and get it right. right. Get it done right. 
but get a good website with search engine optimization. Ensure that people are, are searching and that uh, it's relevant. Social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, work very well for us. And then I would tell you the right point of sale software also mm-hmm. makes a huge difference. Uh, we use Square, not to push Square, but it works well for us. Uh, it not only helps us manage our inventories or keep track of finances, but it's also got great customer insights. And again, mm-hmm. that's real important for us to understand how to reach our customers and we can send them news, coupons, specials, right. and just stay in touch with them. And so those things have helped us. And I would tell you, it's probably good advice for someone else. Okay. Um, one last question. What do you guys see in, for the future of black sheep? Uh, well, uh, we obviously want to continue growing our business and provide more and more, you know, new fabrics, designs and products and supplies for sewing. Uh, you know, one, we are excited, uh, specifically something that we'll be working with you on, mm-hmm. Jennifer, in October, November, is the brand new, uh, it's called the Shop Hop, which is yes. coming in October and November. It's eight weeks where ladies from all, literally all over the country will, they try and get to as many quilt shops as they can in the Carolinas. Mm-hmm. We're on that list of participating uh, shops, and so we're really excited. So you're going to hear a lot more about that, and we want to partner with you know Eden and the Chamber yes. uh, on that. That's coming up later in the year. But above all, we want to continue to build relationships with the customers, provide them with a warm and friendly shopping destination, and you know, and a chance to visit with our brand new uh, puppy, uh, Stitch. <laughs> uh, he's going to be our new mascot. So come Yay. by the shop, and you'll see. You know, we want to make sure that you know you can enjoy Stitch as well. So we thank God for the opportunity. We hope we can give back some of the joy and the happiness that we've received from others. Mm-hmm. That's kind of our ultimate goal. And as we grow the shop, we just want to grow. You know, help grow the uh, the city as well. Awesome. Well, I will say just from a personal standpoint and my own personal opinion, how happy I am that you guys are here. I never, when you first opened, I never thought I would catch the quilting bug. And thankfully, um, I have a new hobby. (laughs) It's catching on. Um, We're we're excited. It's, I have found, um, I didn't think I was going to enjoy it as much as I do. And I'm a little bit disappointed now that I don't have the time that I would like to devote to it, but that's okay. Um, I want to thank you guys for all that you do for contributing to our community for, um, being just so, uh, uplifting and supportive, especially of all the other merchants in the area. It's, it, it means a lot to have, um, other businesses being, supportive of one another so for anybody who has not been over to black sheep um what's your address we're at 651 washington street right downtown awesome awesome so yeah so definitely go down and um check out the shop meet paula kevin and stitch i can't wait to meet him myself um and for um, you can check out this podcast again on our website on the Eden Chamber of Commerce website in the member of the month section at www.edenchamber.com. Again, Paula and Kevin, thank you so much. Thank and you for inviting us. I will be seeing you soon. All right.